It is the Blitz here on San Antonio Sports Star, ESPN AM 1250, 94.5 FM. I'm Jason Lennox. We're live out at R&J Saloon on South Flores. Bray Miller Lite, Cowboy Saints watch party. We got so much stuff to give away from Miller Lite, all their ugly sweaters. Uh, Cowboys Miller Lite gear, including an Otter Box. I think some dude just won one of those. Just print, spin the prize wheel. You're going to win something down here. Eric Morris, head football coach of the UIW Cardinals. You've been watching tape of Sam Houston all week. You might need to come down here and have a drink with us before you head down to Huntsville, man. They're pretty damn good, I'll tell you that much. There, there's a reason they've won 21 straight games and, and been ranked number one in the nation for a long time. So, Yeah, we'll have our hands full, but uh, love our chances, love our team. We're going to go fight them. Well, and, and that's it. And I think about, you know, we talked about this when the bracket came out. I don't like, me personally, how the FCS regionalized the brackets and you play Stephen F. Austin and now you've got Sam Houston State in the second round, the number one team in the country. But let's talk about last week's game. That was a fun, fun environment there at Benson Stadium. And you pull that thing out in overtime. Man, what a game. Yeah, I mean, just speaks volume for, for our coaches and players. I mean, the resiliency this team has. I mean, we started this mantra of finish, and boy, has that come to fruition over and over this year. I mean, and to the, the cool thing was, you know, our kids, they just don't get they don't get bothered by when we get down, when adversity hits. You see some kids on, on certain teams where, you know, they just go in the dumps after that. I mean, I had more defensive guys come up to me after they we, we fumbled. You know, they go and score, go up with five minutes left in the fourth quarter, and you know, our whole defense is surrounded around our offense, and they're saying, hey, go score like you always do. We'll stop them. Let's take this thing into overtime. We'll go win it. Like, this is so simple. And uh, <laughs> lo and behold, you know, I mean, it wasn't that easy. We had some fourth down conversion. A lot of great things happened that last year. The defense uh, played unbelievable down the stretch there. Uh, Coach Deason's just done a phenomenal job with that group all year, uh, continuing to find ways to uh, – to grow the, that, that group on that side. So super proud, but uh, yeah, we're fighters. I'll tell you that much. Uh, you certainly are. And I'll tell you what, the mental toughness that your team shows, because, you know, it, it was a back and forth game. I mean, Stephen F. Austin, uh, that's probably the best Stephen F. Austin team I've seen in, in years. Right. And they get one of the freakiest Batman defensive linemen touchdowns. And I think mentally that would break a lot of other teams. And it didn't break yours. What first off, when you went and watched the film, take me through that sequence. What happened? You know, and that was just, it was a point in the game where we thought, you know, liked our chances of the amount of time on you know, our defense got a big stop there. They punted to us. Um, you know, went back to just an inside zone play that we ran out. Actually it was a counter play, but an inside run scheme with Kevin Brown. We'd liked it all game, had you know couple of five and six yard gains on them close to splitting them so went back to just a simple thing we'd run a million times uh, probably the safest play I could call on my call sheet and then all of a sudden I look up and you know there is a 300 pound great athletic D lineman running you know into the end zone I'm like holy smoke how does that happen but just like you said I mean uh, that was a time where a bunch of people, I think they would have blinked. Uh, they would have had some anxiety and not been able to go out there and perform at a high level to go score against a great defense. And uh, and we didn't do it. You know, we, we drove it down a methodical drive and, and get it all the way down to the six-yard line on fourth and two. And Cam Ward has an unbelievable play to, uh, to throw a ball into cover two that uh, most quarterbacks don't see. Absolutely. It was a, a, a fun game. And then, of course, the final play of the game, you've got to get a defensive stop. And, you know, I, I've been up and down with you on it. And I always try to be honest. I mean, there's been sometimes I, I scratch my head at your defense and just hope you outscore them. But when you've needed them to show up, especially late in the season, they've made the plays and they made the defensive plays in overtime. And what they did on that fourth down play was incredible because that quarterback seemed to have the ball for about 10 minutes looking for somebody open. Oh, uh, they've always been great, and, and Coach Deason always had something crazy for those particular situations. I mean, even the nickel situation, we went out and played a total different defense we'd shown on film the whole entire year. We put two defense alignment in, um, and and we had, I think, two minus 11. We had nine defensive backs in against nickels. Now, the, the same thing here. We call timeout. We go into just the craziest defense you've ever seen, uh, put a pressure on them, get Kelechi and Lebechi rushing the passer. Um, double team number two, who was such a good player for them. 
And so uh, credit to our coaches for having a great plan for when those situations come up. Eric Morris joining us here on the Blitz. He's the head football coach of the UIW Cardinals, the Southland Conference Coach of the Year, a finalist for the Eddie Robinson National Coach of the Year. I mean, you're collecting all these awards, and your team is a big reason for that. Now you've got Sam Houston in the second round, and I think anybody that follows, follows FCS football understands the tradition they have at Sam Houston State. And I know you're building to have that down the road but you guys have played them, this group, last year in the spring, and they didn't graduate a whole lot of guys. Is that good or bad for your preparation? You know, I think it's good. You know, the one unique thing is is they brought everybody back. Their team's pretty much the exact same, where we've added some key pieces to our puzzle. You know, we have some key contributors on both sides that are graduate transfers or transfers from other four years, a couple of junior college kids. So, you know, I, I think we know – kind of what what we're going to get with them I mean a really good solid team on all three phases um now with them it, it's going to be a little bit different for them I mean we got some you know guys and and some wide receivers some defense alignment um a running back some guys that they hadn't seen before and so uh yeah I mean I, I think we've improved a lot which obviously they've improved too they've played 10 games they're 10 and 0 I mean it's not like they're slouching but I think that we've improved a ton since we played them we got hit by COVID the first time didn't have a ton of O-linemen so uh so, yeah, I mean, we get a great opportunity to go out there and shock the world and, and excited to watch our kids go do it. One of the things that I've heard Casey Keeler, the Sam Houston head coach, say, and he's, he's mentioned it a couple of times throughout the regular season, is, you know, they played the spring season and then you go win a national championship in May, and then you turn around and now you're playing this full season. He's got a tired, beat-up football team. How do you take advantage of that? Yeah, and they've had time to rest. I mean, and and to I mean, he's putting some stuff in now, and, and I agree with him. It's a lot, but they only played ten games, which was smart of them. They played one less than everybody else, and then they got a bye week last week. So you know, you get to this point in the season. I mean, we're in week fourteen for us. We also played a spring season. I mean, there's a bunch that goes into it, but um, you know, and, and I think injuries play a, a key factor. But I think both sides are pretty healthy. And um, and it's gonna be a fun game. I mean, I mean, he's done an unbelievable job at building that roster. About to go FBS here in a couple of years, and so um, so it might be the last chance for us, you know, to knock him off as the FCS program. And you look at that when you look at what Sam does offensively, or how they play on the defensive side. What's kept you up uh, this week? Is it? trying to scheme against their defense or trying to figure out how to slow down that Eric Smith left uh, led offense. You know, they're so good in all three. And then you add, you know, their, their punt returner uh, was, was all American last year and it's taken a ton back and, and all conference performer again. So I think they're just so complete. I mean, that's what we've talked about. I, mean, I think one big thing in this game for us is we're going to have to start fast. You know, they've had a tendency where they've jumped on some people really early you know, I'm watching film the other day. It's still in the second quarter, and, you know, it shows the the score in between each play on film with no audio. So I'm looking up, and there's three minutes left in the second quarter, and it's already 52 to zero. And they're because I noticed because they're already taking some of their starters out, and I'm like, holy smokes, that happened in a hurry. And so, uh, so I think it would be key for us to start fast. And then, too, I mean, we're, we can't give them anything. I mean, we're going to really, I mean, we can't have turnovers, give them extra possession. Um, you know, we can't come out and have some dumb penalties to, you know, put ourselves in some bad situations on self-inflicted wounds. So we're going to have to play a great game. We're going to have to start fast. We're going to have to protect the football. UIW at Sam Houston, Saturday, 2 o'clock, obviously on ESPN+, Plus, but a big watch party planned for a smoke barbecue. So go down there, uh, be with a bunch of Cardinals at that event as you're watching uh, the game out there. And for you, another road trip. And in Huntsville, I know sometimes when you've gone to Louisiana or Lamar, you don't stay in the city. You get somewhere close and drive in. What's your plans for this weekend? Yeah, North Houston, uh, Woodlands area, San Woodlands. But, you know, it's 40 miles or so uh, to the stadium. And so we'll stay there. A bunch of our guys are from Houston. A um, bunch of our fans are traveling in. I uh, heard it's going to be a great atmosphere. So excited to, to have our kids experience a, a true, you know, FCS playoff atmosphere. Last week was incredible, probably the best atmosphere we've ever had here at the NEF. Uh, ended up 6-0 and here, and uh, and now we're on to the next one and, and playing the national champs in their place, and it doesn't get more exciting than that. So what I actually heard you say is you're going to have the bus 
and stay right by Bucky's there in Katy. <laughs> no Bucky's. I, I got the itinerary today. I was a little bit disappointed. No Bucky's on the way down there because we have to go on some loop around. Um, on the way back, uh, mandatory Bucky stop. Well, mandatory Bucky's on the way back. I, I think you're the head coach. You could probably get them to 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 drive down a little bit, turn around, stop at Bucky's, then you get on that that loop, that uh, toll road loop thing to avoid going all the way through Houston before you get all to 45. Yeah, that that yeah. cutaway there. It's going to be fun I'll stuff. Talk. I'll talk to them, see if I can get a change. I mean, do they not know you? I mean, if they I know, know you have to too, stop at Bucky's, how well. do they not know that? <laughs> Man, the head- Bucky stop. Yeah, head coach Eric Morris joining us here on the Blitz. I know you're focused on Sam. Can I ask you a couple of knucklehead uh, college football type questions? Always, always. All right. So. Obviously, this week you see Lincoln Riley leave OU to go to USC. You see uh, Kelly leave Notre Dame to go to LSU. And these coaches say, Lincoln Riley, hardest decision ever made, said he didn't have any conversation with USC, he or his agent, until after they lost the Bedlam game to Oklahoma State. Do you buy that? You know, maybe with him would be the only one, just because I think he's, earn that right and he's such a big name that he could put somebody off that long and someone still wants him. But the majority of these things, I mean, the more I've gotten into it is, you know, everything that we some coming out, I mean, it's, it's been started, you know, a month or two before and people are doing the re- research, talking to agents, you know, now you have search firms, now you have the, the uh, agents, then you have the athletic directors all in this intertwined circle um, where, and, and I think they do a pretty good job of, keeping things under wrap and the one thing that they do a really good job of is they put false things out there <laughs> to the media for everybody to take these bites when really they want you to divert because something totally different behind the scenes is going on and so uh so yeah i mean hard position i mean for people to to be getting this type of money these days i mean just life changing for generations and then still have the um you know, the, the love that you built for these players and these families and the staff. I mean, it's a hard position to be in. I think it's it's a no-win situation either way. You know, I mean, for these meetings, I, I saw someone, you know, taped, you know, it's, uh, Kelly's meeting. It was four minutes and everybody's on him. I mean, I, I just I, – I think you're damned if you do and you're damned if you're done in those certain situations. And, and again, I, I agree with you. I mean, you've got to make the best decision for, for you and your family and, you know – Sometimes it is you want a new challenge. Sometimes it is money or the unlimited use of a private plane, whatever the the perks end up being. And you, I just got to believe you've known about it for a long time. When you were with Mike Leach and, you know, you're at Washington State and then, you know, then you're not. I mean, you know, that doesn't just come around like overnight, like, hey, I got a phone call. We just lost a game. You're going to offer me how much? Yeah, I'll, I'll do that. I, I mean, I just, you know, but with the early signing day, how much does that impact having coaches having to decide right now this is when we're going oh it's been huge and too and and i think you know these coaches are getting fired so early in the season you know so you can get ahead of it only for recruiting you know and i think you know texas tech's a great example of that i mean joey mcguire who's known as you know a guy that could go out and in his forte in texas can be recruiting and so you know they make a decision with with a guy who had five wins and was about to go to a bowl game so they could jump ahead and sign people and so um so, yeah, I mean, I think, you know, and there's so much money in this business and there's so much money tied by donors. And then, you know, everybody wants to talk about these buyouts. And at these big schools, I mean, at LSU, I mean, that's, that's about five phone calls away from gathering up enough money to make this stuff happen because <laughs> they want to, you know, they want to have bragging rights and win games and, and try to get to the national championship. So it's become a business. Um, you know, obviously, you know, coaches, I think, enjoy the fact now that they're getting paid more money um never bad but uh, there's so much that comes along with that um and and too it's it's never easy and and i think it's only going to get harder as, as as this thing continues to to go the way it is although watch of this i don't think i ever want to hear a coach complain about the transfer portal again i agree with that i agree with that now and i was against the transfer portal to start um and then, too, you know, we've had positive and negatives with the transfer portal, but we've, we've had – I've had kids leave here because they were not having a good experience here or, you know, for some reason, you know, this wasn't the right place for them. 
and they've left here and they've been, gone on to be successful somewhere else. And so I think, you know, these kids, every, everybody's in different times in their lives. You know, there's different outside circumstances going on. I mean, at the end of the day, we, we want these kids to get their degree. We want them to have the best experience possible in college and going to be great, you know, members of society. Football teaches you, you know, all this discipline, how to go through adversity, how to be a fighter. And so uh, at the end of the day, that's what football's about. That's what it needs to continue to be about. Absolutely. Eric Morris, head football coach of the UIW Cardinals. They have Sam Houston State on the road in Huntsville, Saturday, 2 o'clock. Big watch party planned for a smoke barbecue downtown. Of course, you won't be at that. You're going to be at Huntsville. Uh, go shock the world, man. Hey, I appreciate you, man. My my buddies, too, uh, are coming in to play uh, – to play UTSA, what's your, what's your prediction on on UTSA? Have you made a prediction yet? I, I have not. I, UTSA has got their hands full, and they've got to get some stops. I mean, that quarterback they have out of Victoria, I mean, that, that kid is good. But I think – We saw him, you know, firsthand for the last two years here. I, I, I tell you what, though, Eric, you tell me. I, I think the loss last week was probably good for UTSA. They, they, they had a pissed-off week of practice. It probably recharged the batteries, no doubt. And Jeff's done a phenomenal job. He's a great leader. So I'm interested. It'll it'll be a fun one to watch. I'll be tuned in tomorrow night to uh, to watch them duke it out in the dome. It's going to be fun. Hopefully a great weekend for the birds of San Antonio. Eric, appreciate That's it, right. man. Good luck. Have a great weekend. Eric Morris, head football coach of the UIW Cardinals, again, on the road against Sam Houston State. And what I love is, you know, we know here, here in San Antonio, you know, Jeff Trailer will – We'll promote and talk about what they're doing at UIW. Same thing for Merrick Morris. It's just such a good time for college football in San Antonio.